and the law gives me a, a guideline for um, how to analyze uh, an appropriate sentence in this case. So I want to start with the Camacho case. It's really the first thing I need to, uh, to, to address is whether or not the court's going to depart from the, uh, the, the minimum in this case, which is 222 months or approximately 18 and a half years in the Florida State Prison uh, as, as a minimum. The Camacho case, uh, as Mr. Fitzgibbons uh, pointed out and argued, uh, lays out really a, a, a three-factor test. Is there a valid legal basis for departure? Is there competent substantial evidence uh, that the facts uh, support an application? Or so the, do, do, uh, do the facts apply to the departure basis uh, that, that is being uh, asserted? To both of those questions, uh, I, I answer those yes. There, there is a valid legal basis for departure and there is competent substantial evidence that would support uh, a departure. Um, and, and really, I, I find that as to all of the departure bases argued, with the exception of uh, the disparity argument. I'll just comment on that one for, for, for a moment. The, the defendant has argued that, a, that, that an available basis for departure is the disparity uh, between the guidelines and the sentence that Mr. Barano got. Um, I don't agree with that. I, I agree that disparity could potentially be a, an available legal basis for departure. Uh, but in this case, I, I don't think it applies because I, I do think that there are uh, important substantive differences uh, between the facts as applied to Mr. Barano and the facts as applied to, to Mr. Heron. Uh, the states put those on the, on the record. Uh, I, I won't elaborate on it too much other than to say I, I think that the difference, that the age of majority for Mr. Heron is uh, one of those. But mostly I, I just think that um, the, the, the facts are different as, to, as between those two defendants. And, and so um, I, I don't believe that the facts in this case support that as a departure basis because I, I, I believe that... Um, a disparity in sentence between Mr. Barano and Mr. Heron is appropriate in this case. Th that brings me to the third question of should the, essentially the third, the third factor under the Camacho case is should the trial court depart? And uh, the, the court in this case is, is, is going to decline to depart. So I'm answering that question in the negative. Uh, the, the trial court in this case is not going to depart. And uh, I, I don't reach that decision lightly. I, I'm, um, you, you know, when, when evaluating an, an appropriate sentence, uh, I, I will start with uh, Florida Statute 921.002. It was pointed out several times the primary purpose uh, of the Criminal Punishment Code in Florida is to punish. And I've got to take into account the severity of the primary offense and the circumstances surrounding the primary offense. When I take into account circumstances and severity, a lot of what I'm taking into account really when I sentence is um, intent and harm. And in this case, uh, there, there wasn't any evidence and nor, nor does the court believe that there was any specific intent to do harm uh, in this case to the victims. Um, but there was intent to drive at, at an egregious speed, uh, 102 miles an hour, regardless of the consequences and regardless of, of who that ended up harming. And, and, and then the second part of that, the second component, is the harm caused. And in this case, it's just impossible to have greater harm than the, than the harm uh, that, that occurred in this case, uh, which was the loss uh, of a mother loss of a baby and, um, and, and really the, the loss of a family as it existed when this occurred. I, I did consider, uh, I, I also want to make a, a record, I did consider uh, sentencing Mr. Heron a, as a youthful offender, but for the same reasons that I'm discussing, uh, I, I didn't think sentencing him as a youthful offender was appropriate. I, I agree that youthful offender 
was something that the court could have done. I did consider it. I carefully considered it. But uh, the, the court just found that due to the, the serious nature of these offenses, the extreme uh, nature of the conduct, and, and again, the, 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 the level of harm that a youthful offender sentence was not appropriate. So given that the court is not um, departing, the guidelines call for a sentence of 18, essentially 18 and a half years uh, at a minimum and 30 years as a maximum. And the court doesn't find that either uh, the minimum or the maximum is appropriate in this case. I've, I've said it several times, the serious nature of the offense, egregious nature of the conduct, uh, and, and specifically, the, the, uh, the court did take into account that the defendant's 18, certainly responsible for his actions, and he's being held accountable for his actions. Uh, but, but the age uh, of, of 18, the court finds, it, it is a mitigating factor and uh, shouldn't put this at a maximum. Also, the, the complete lack of prior criminal history is something that the court considered as uh, preventing this from, from being at the top. So ha having said all that, the court is um, going really toward the, the middle between the, the minimum under the guidelines and, and the maximum uh, punishment permitted under Florida state law. So on count one, vehicular homicide, the court's going to uh, adjudicate the defendant guilty, sentence him to nine years in the Florida State Prison. On count two, same charge, the court will adjudicate the defendant guilty, sentence him to 15 years Florida State Prison, and that'll run consecutive to count one. For a total, 24 years Florida State Prison. Count three is a misdemeanor, unlawful racing on a highway. So the court will adjudicate the defendant guilty, sentence him to time served. Give credit for time served, I believe, two days. Court will impose mandatory court costs. Mr. Heron, you have given up the right to appeal the determination of your guilt or innocence. You do have 30 days to appeal the sentence of the court. And I'll direct the bailiffs to take Mr. Heron into custody. 